Hey folks, Phil Zito here, and welcome to day 14 of the BAS Bootcamp. In, in today's video, we are gonna be talking through graphics. So I know one of the most common questions we get, especially from building operators, is how do I make changes to my graphics? Now, this is one of the things that is going to be especially different for pretty much every manufacturer, but there are some common concepts that we have across the board that will really help us to understand how we change graphics. So the first thing is, what is a graphic? Well, a graphic is a representation of data on and within your building automation system. So if we click on this air handler graphic, we can see a representation of the data from the air handler. Now, typically we will have three types of graphics. We'll have a home plan uh, or a home page. We'll have a floor plan, which I don't really have up here. And then we'll have an equipment graphic, like an AHU graphic or maybe a VAV graphic. All right, now you can see that this VAV graphic has no data inside it. That's because this graphic is known as a template graphic. Um, it uses what are called aliased points. Uh, Niagara calls them relativized ORDs, but essentially what it is, is if we go in here and we look at the point, we'll notice that it is not a actual, it just says slot zone temp set point. It doesn't have all of the details like controller and point address, all that stuff that we would normally need. What this allows us to do then is this allows us to actually go to a VAV box and have graphics specific to that VAV controller. And that allows us to create one graphic for multiple devices. So that is an alias graphic or a relativized graphic or a template graphic, whatever you call it. Then we have our just standard graphics. These are graphics that are hard bound to the actual points themselves. If we go and we look at a point and I click on it, we'll see that it's actually bound to that specific controller. We can see that right there. It's not relativized, it's not aliased. And because of that, um, one, it will definitely make it easier to make graphical changes, especially if you wanna make a graphical change for one device. However, at the same time, it is much more time consuming as far as going and creating the graphics. Because imagine if you did a, temp, uh, a standard graphic, not a template graphic for every VAV box and you had 100 VAV boxes, that would be a nightmare because you would go and have to manually bind the points for every graphic, that's why Quite often, we use these template graphics. The problem with template graphics, especially if you're a building operator, and you go and you change things, is that by changing things, let's say that you're using a VAV template graphic, but then you have a space that you need to do a dehumidification sequence in. So you add reheat and you say, I'm gonna subcool the space and then I'm gonna heat the air back up, kinda of do some dehumidification. Well, now you have a reheat valve you've gotta to add to this. You can't simply go to the editor, right? You can't go to the editor and then go to your graphics library. Um, so if we go here and we go to kit and we go to, um, let's just use our HVAC graphic, right? And we'll go to coils. We can't simply go here and throw a heating coil on here and call it a day because that would add a heating coil to every VAV's graphic, which naturally causes a problem because now all of our templates will have that. So oftentimes when I'm a building operator, if, if I'm a building operator and I'm trying to change graphics, this is where they get hosed up is because they say, oh, well, we did a TI, like a tenant finish out, tenant improvement, and we added a reheat valve. Well, if you try to go change the template graphic, then that becomes a problem. So what do you do? Well, one thing you could do is you could just copy the graphic, right? We could just copy and paste the graphic, and then we could add our heating coil to it, relativize that heating coil, and then bind that to any reheat boxes going forward. That's one of the ways to do it. Additionally, we could copy this, uh, this graphic, right? We could once again go to copy it, and we could just manually bind the points. We don't have to relativize them. We could actually go and manually bind the points themselves. 
And by doing that, that would create a basically a hard coded standard graphic that we could use. So if we look at this from the end user's perspective, what will typically happen is we'll have a home graphic. I know this isn't pretty, but it's just for demonstration purposes. I just whipped it together. But what it allows us to do on this home graphic is have an overview of what's going on within the facility, gives us the ability to change things in the facility, and gives us the ability to dive in to the actual points themselves and make changes accordingly. So that's how graphics work. And basically to dive deeper into this, right? To dive a little bit deeper into graphics. What's going on here? If we go here and we go to PX Editor and I click on the button, we can see kind of how things are working, right? It's binding to the actual controller. This is a template graphic that is bound to this actual controller. So when I go and actually click on this point. So when I go to the view and I click on this point, it then knows this is controller one and it's going to pull the data associated with controller one's points. So what I'm grabbing here is I am grabbing. So if I go here and I override this to 50%, one, it's going to change color, and depending on the software you have, you may get color changes, you may get text that says overridden. There's a variety of different things that may happen. But now, if I go to controller one and I actually look at the points, like I go to view and uh, we could go to property sheet, right? We could go to property sheet and see what it is. And we see right here, right? Our point is overridden at priority eight, which is operator override priority. Now, if I go and I release the override by clicking on auto, we're going to see that it actually goes back to a hundred. Now, if we go to the graphic by just clicking on the controller, we see it's now at a hundred. So that's what happens from a user perspective. Now, if you are developing graphics, let's say you are developing graphics for a customer, here's what I want you to think of. When you're developing customers, think of the three-click rule. So when, when you're developing graphics for customers, think of the three-click rule. A customer should be able to get to whatever they need within three clicks. Right here we can see if I go into my AHU and I decide that, oh, I need to actually get into the schedule, I can go back that's one click, and I can go two clicks, I'm in the schedule. Now I can go back here, right? And if I need to go to the VAV box, I can go here, I can go back, and I can go into a different VAV box. This is a very simple de demonstration of that, but you can build this out as such so that within three clicks, a customer can get to anything. That's a general, um, user design philosophy that makes things really easy for an end user is having that three click rule because then by doing that the end user is able to access things quickly and the quicker they're able to access things the more likely they are to find the user interface intuitive which increases the likelihood that they're going to use this so to recap we tend to have three types of graphics we have home graphics we have floor plan graphics and we have unit graphics. Of the unit graphics, there tend to be two types. We have a standard graphic, which is where the points are hard bound to the graphic. And then we have template graphics where the points are relativized or aliased, whatever you wanna call it. And then we enter a controller as we click on the button right here, that communicates to the graphic what controller we're using. And then it has those aliased points show up as we see right here. Thanks a ton for watching. I hope this really helped you understand graphics and gave you some ideas about how you can make your graphics better. Thanks a ton and take care.